What's up everyone? Today we're going to write a function that determines whether or not two lines intersect. So in other words, whether there's some point in a two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system where the two lines would cross each other. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing that we need to do is we notice that this is a really vague question, right? Like how are the lines going to be represented? When does like a line, if we have two of the same line, does that count as a line intersecting itself? Things like this that we need to con like figure out what exactly we're doing. So in this case, let's assume that we ask our interviewer and they tell us we can represent the line however we want. And this is going to make the problem a bit more interesting because depending on how we represent the line, this question can be a really easy question or a really hard question. So we're going to talk about how we'll design that in a second. And the other question that I had particularly was whether or not a line intersects with itself. And this, you know, you could go either way. I'm going to say it does because from a geometrical standpoint, that's what makes sense, I think. But you could maybe treat it the other way if that makes more sense, and depending on what your interviewer says. So let's get into the actual problem itself. And if you remember from you know high school geometry, whenever you learn geometry, we can represent a line by this function y equals mx plus b, right? Where y is the y coordinate x is the x coordinate and then m is the slope and b is some sort of intercept on the y axis. So by doing this we will be able to really easily determine whether two lines intersect because the other thing that we remember from geometry is that every line that is every two line and we're doing this on a two-dimensional coordinate system so it's you know, you might, that might be something else that you'd want to double check with your interviewer because it's a lot more complicated if you try and do this in three dimensions. But let's, we're going to assume that we're doing this in two dimensions and we know that any two lines that are not parallel to each other are going to intersect. And along those same lines, we know that any two lines that have different slopes are not parallel to each other. So that's going to make it really easy if we represent our lines in this form by having the slope and the intercept, it's going to be really easy for us to say just by comparing the slopes that the two lines are either intersecting or they're not. And the only case that we're, the only special case there that we're going to have to deal with is if the lines are actually the same and then they intersect even though the slopes are the same. So let's, this is going to be a really important problem to think about how we're actually designing the code because this is a really good chance for us to show our ability to do a sort of more object-oriented design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line object and that object is going to have an instance method that is going to tell whether or not this line intersects with another line that's passed in. And I think that makes sense because whether the line intersects with another line is a good method to go within our line object. And we will just go ahead and I'm going to create this object. So I'm going to call it public class. I'm just going to call it line. We're going to have, we were talking about, we're going to have two, we have the M and we have the B. So the M is the slope and the B is the Y intercept. So we can just go ahead and we can create variables for those. So private double slope and private double Y intercept. And it may be good to check with your interviewer and confirm whether these should be doubles or integers. But in almost all cases I can think of, you would want these to be doubles because you can have some sort of weird like value where you're in between two integers. It makes sense, right? So that's not something you want to forget. And then the one other thing that we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and add, and this is because we're going to be comparing doubles. And comparing doubles in Java is notoriously problematic because there is differing precision potentially between the different doubles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a static variable called epsilon. And I'm just going to make that equal to some small value. It doesn't matter exactly what the value of epsilon is. 
this is what I'm gonna do. But what we're gonna use the epsilon for is we're gonna say if two doubles differ by less than epsilon, then for our purposes, they're the same number. And you might wanna to talk to your interviewer about how you would choose this epsilon value. For example, really what we're trying to do is the epsilon value is taking into account any lack of precision. So the epsilon value should be basically represent the smallest order or the most the smallest bit that is the precision that you want, right? So like if you only are doing a precision down to the hundredths place, then you wouldn't need to do this. You would want to do uh, just like this value instead because that will give you precision down to the hundredths place. But I want it to be a little more precise than that and we don't know exactly what the data is that we're gonna be using here, so I can't say what the precision is. So I'm gonna err on the side of caution and be more precise. And so we're gonna just, we want a public constructor, right? So just public line, and that's gonna take in a slope and intercept. And we'll just set those, and that's all we need to do here. So just this dot slope equals slope, and this dot y intercept equals y intercept. So there's our constructor, and now we're going to want to create a intersect method. And you know, obviously. In, uh, in the real world, we would create a bunch of other methods for this line. For example, here I set these as private variables, which would mean that we would want to probably either make this some sort of, we would want them to either be final or we would want them to have setters and getters. And the reason for that is that we could say one of two things. We could say that our line is an immutable type and that would mean that we are not gonna make, we're not gonna change the values within the line after we set them. And so that, you know, I would basically do private final double and private final y intercept, double y intercept. And that way that's gonna prevent us from ever changing those values in the future. And that would be potentially a good thing to do as and another, the alternative would be that we would let these be changed, but then we, currently have these set to private, so you can't access them from outside the class. So you'd either need to set these to be public, or you would need to have setters and getters for them. So in this case, I'm just not gonna worry about it, but it's something that's really good to mention to your interviewer. In this case, I'm just not worrying about it because it's not super relevant to the problem I'm trying to solve, but it's good for your interviewer to know that you are thinking about this because you want them to know that you, even though you're not gonna take the time to do it, it's something that you realize would be good and would be a better, like to know that you're thinking about writing the best code that you can. So we're gonna do a public Boolean intersect. And that's going to take in a line. And I'm also going to actually implement, uh, I'm going to override the equals method for this because I'm going to use that to, if the two lines are equal, then they should intercept, intersect. So it'll be helpful for me to have the equals method. And it's again, just sort of like one of these other things where it's like showing that you really know what you're talking about and that you're thinking about this from a higher level perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and do the equals method. And in Java, I, especially for things like equals and to string, it's highly recommended that you use the override annotation because that is going to tell you that you're properly overriding it and that you're not saying that you're overriding it. and then maybe you got one of the arguments wrong and then all of a sudden you've created this method that's not actually getting called. So public Boolean, equals, and I'm gonna do this first before I do the intersect. So it's gonna take in an object, and then basically for equals, and you can read a ton more about this if you, especially in Java, if you pick up Effective Java is a really good book. There's a whole section on like equals and hash code and stuff like that. So, but I'll just go over it briefly. So we want to, first check that O is an instance of line. So if O, not O instance of line, then we're gonna return false because obviously 
if our object is something other than a line, then it can't be equal to the line. And then if it is equal, we're, or if it is an instance, we're going to cast it to a line. So we'll just say line line equals line O. And then all we need to do is compare. So this is the comparison I was talking about earlier where we are gonna use the epsilon. So, or one of the comparisons where we're gonna use it. So we're gonna re just return math dot, so we're gonna get the difference between the two slopes and then say if the difference is greater than epsilon, then those two doubles are actually representing different values and therefore they're not equal. And obviously for this, we're just gonna compare, like to compare two lines, we're just gonna say is the slope equal and is the y intercept equal. So we'll do math dot absolute value to get the difference and we're gonna say y intercept minus line dot y intercept and is less than epsilon, right? Because we wanna know if they're equal or not. So if that's less than epsilon, then that means that they're the same value. And then we're also going to compare the, um, the so I actually meant to do slope here and then we'll do y intercept next, but it really doesn't matter very much because it, the order obviously is irrelevant here. So I just think this looks slightly cleaner. So we'll do math dot absolute value of y intercept minus line dot y intercept. And that is also less than epsilon. And that's all there is to the equals method. So we're just comparing the, we're just saying are the slope and the y intercept very, very close to each other, right? Are they less than epsilon different from each other? And that's, if they're both less than epsilon different, then these two lines are equal. So now coming back to our intersect, we are doing two things, right? We're testing, is the slope, are the slopes equal? And if the slopes are equal, well, so are the two lines equal? And if they're not equal, are the two slopes equal? And so if the lines are equal, we're gonna return true. If the slopes are equal, we're gonna return false. And then every other case, we're gonna return true. But, so let's go ahead and, I'm actually gonna do this the backwards of the way that I just described, but it's gonna have the same effect. So this dot equals line. And if so, we're gonna return true. So if the two lines are equal, and then I'm gonna say that if the epsilon value, if the difference is greater than epsilon, I'm also gonna return true. So if math dot absolute value of slope minus line dot slope is greater than epsilon, then return true. And finally, I'm gonna return false. And so, as you can see, what we're doing is we're just, in this case, we don't care about the y-intercept because we only care whether the lines are parallel or not. So we're going to just calculate the difference in the slope, and if the slope is, difference is large enough, then we're gonna return true because the lines are have different slopes and they're gonna cross at some point. So that's really all there is here, and we can test this a little bit just to, you know, do a very simple example. So let's say that, uh, we'll create like line A is going to be new line of zero and one and line B equals new line one and one, for example, just like very arbitrary values, but it's fine. We're going to say, a, we're going to call A dot intersect B like this. So. We're, we'll come down here, we take in the line, they're not equal, we'll, we'll call equals and we'll say that yes, it is an instance of line, and here the slope of, the, of B minus, or sorry, the slope of A minus the slope of B is negative one, so the absolute value is one, which is not less than epsilon, so we're gonna return false here. And then we're gonna come here and we're gonna say that, so the slope of we're basically doing the same thing again, right? We're doing slope is zero minus slope one is gonna be one. The absolute value is gonna be one and that is greater than epsilon, so we're gonna return true. 
which is what we expect. And then we can change this slightly. So let's say that they're parallel like this. So they have the same slope. Then we'll come back here. We're going to say equals again. We're going to see that the slope minus the a dot slope minus b dot slope is going to be equal to zero, which is less than epsilon. But y intercept, the difference in the intercepts is one. And that is not less than epsilon. So they're not equal. But we're going to come here and we're going to say that the slope of each one minus the other is going to be zero, which is not greater than epsilon. So we're going to come down here and we're going to, and we're going to return false, which is again what we expect. And that's basically all there is to this problem. It's a really good problem to show how you think about program design, particularly object oriented design. And hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or on the blog. And I will see you all again soon.